Ghana and Ivory Coast are the world's top cocoa producers. In fact, these two countries account for about two-thirds of the global cocoa production. And on 27th of October 2022, these two countries boycotted meetings with the World Cocoa Foundation on Cocoa Sustainability. The two largest cocoa producers in the world are pushing back over being shortchanged for their beans. Ghana and Ivory Coast are boycotting a major cocoa industry meeting held in Brussels this week. While the price of chocolate has increased by 6% this year, that has not been reflected in the earnings of Ivorian and Ghanaian growers who have seen the price of raw cocoa plummet over the last three years. They say that's an unfair deal that reflects global power imbalances and they've warned that unfair tactics, market tactics, have damaging environmental consequences and drastically depressed the living standards of cocoa farmers, most of whom live in poverty. You see, I have been telling you that the Africa now is not the same Africa you knew some years ago because this time around, we are taking back our lost glory. So in today's video, we would like to dive a little deeper into the history of cocoa in Ghana and Ivory Coast and why they are now boycotting meetings with the World Cocoa Foundation. But before we start everything, please, as always, support us by liking this video and also subscribing to this channel for more videos like this. Thank you very much for your support. Now, let's dive into it. Ghana today is the second largest producer of cocoa when cocoa is one of the major export crop of the country's economy. Cocoa contributes an average of 3.5% of Ghana's gross domestic product GDP and it employs about 17% of the working population. But before you understand how Ghana became the second world's cocoa producing country, let me take you back to the 1870s. In the year 1870, a Ghanaian blacksmith called Tetekwashi, yes, this man, through his experience as a blacksmith, he traveled to Fernando Po Island, which is now Bioko in Equatoria, Guinea. His mission in Fernando Po was a missionary work as a blacksmith. But apart from him being an experienced blacksmith, his hobby was farming. Tetekwashi worked and lived in Fernando Po for six good years. And when he was returning to Ghana, the then Gold Coast, he came with several cocoa beans and he planted them on his farm at Mount Pon Equiapim, a small town in the eastern region of Ghana. I mean, this place. And this is one of the first cocoa trees planted in the 1870s. Within three to five years, the crop matured and the people of Mampon began to consume it. And later, many people developed an interest in growing it and Tetekwashi helped them to do so. So soon, Mampon became the first cocoa hub of the country. And later, the crop became a commercial product for huge business and income. By 1891, cocoa beans or cuttings were being sent and spread to nearby countries such as Nigeria, Sierra Leone, and other countries. In 1893, Ghana officially exported its first two bags of cocoa, but sadly, Tetekwashi could not witness it because he died on December 25, 1892. Ghana became the world's top cocoa producer, and the country alone was contributing between 30 to 40% of world's total cocoa output. But in the late 1970s, the world market price for cocoa crashed. And for that reason, Ghana cocoa farmers were getting less than 40% of the world market price. And because of that, many farmers stopped producing cocoa. In the early 1980s, Ghana experienced a harsh drought and that drought also led to bush fires. The drought and bush fires brought down Ghana's cocoa production to just 12% of total world production, which gave way for countries like Cote d'Ivoire to become the top cocoa producer in the world. Currently, around 1.6 million people are involved in the growing of cocoa and many more in associated industries. Cocoa is now cultivated in six regions in Ghana, which are Western, Central, Bono, Ahafo, Eastern, Ashanti, and the Vota region of the country. At its peak, it accounted for 66% of the country's foreign exchange. So, may the gentle soul of Tetekwashi continuously rest in peace for bringing such a great treasure to Ghana and some African countries that is feeding millions of people on our beautiful continent. 
now let's dive into the next section of the video which is why the two world cocoa producing countries are now boycotting meetings with the world cocoa foundation well it is all because of this i mean the chocolate industry the number one ingredient used in making chocolate is cocoa but the sad truth is that the global cocoa market as of 2020 had a value of 11 billion dollars and the chocolate industry also has a value of 135 billion dollars this means that cocoa farmers are earning less than six percent of their profit in the chocolate industry and that is unfair ghana and Ivory Coast alone account for about two-thirds of global cocoa production as I stated in the beginning of the video. But most farmers in these countries do not earn a good living income from their cocoa beans, meaning they can't afford a decent housing, food, education for their children, and other basic expenses. For this reason, some Ghanaian farmers are selling their lands to illegal gold miners. You see this piece of land? I took over about 300 million from it. Just two months. I built my own two rooms at Wedding Makasi, but I worked 20 years without by even a single pro. Now I have my own premises. So I rely myself on the gold more than cocoa. Government can never stop Galemse in this Ghana at all, at all. I have the gold, I have plenty of money in my pocket. So I don't mind cocoa. Look, I'm now cutting it off, you see. It is my own bonifair property. Nobody can stop me to stop cutting my own cocoa tree. Are you build, are you plant it for me? So since 2018, the governments of Ghana and Ivory Coast came together to form an allies in order to defend the interests of their farmers by increasing the prices of their cocoa beans. And that collaboration has so far yielded some good results because as the 2022-2023 market year for cocoa beans, the Ivorian government has increased cocoa purchase price by 900 CFA per kilo, which represents an 9% increment from the previous season and Ghana has also increased their prices by 21% but still looking at the work that goes into farming of cocoa this increment is still not enough for the cocoa farmers so because farmers from Ghana and Ivory Coast only receive 6% of their 135 billion profit from the chocolate industry and for years the World Cocoa Foundation has refused to do something about it for the farmers is why these two countries are refusing to have a meeting with them on cocoa sustainability. So now let's hear something small from Alex Asanvo, who is the secretary of the Côte d'Ivoire Ghana Cocoa Initiative. So farmer, if you look at the data, cocoa farmers and you look also at the market are not being paid even what is enough to cover the cost of production. And this is the market price associated to the cocoa. So if the farmer cannot get to this decent income, how can we tell the farmer that he should, he should care about environment and other things? This company, after exploration and investigations, uh, definitely will not be able to call the program sustainability because we are going to suspend. And I think for us, this is a very clear message. Any sustainability that is associated with any manipulation of the market down will be suspended in Cote d'Ivoire and Ghana. So, as a child of a Ghanaian cocoa farmer, I know the hard work that goes into cocoa farming every year. From the application of weedicide, pesticide, fertilizers, harvesting, drying, and others, it is sad that upon all this hard work that goes into it, some people somewhere in Switzerland, Germany, Belgium, Italy, or Poland are enjoying, whilst our farmers continue to battle with poverty. And it is a shame to humanity. But I believe that this new set of African leaders is ready to change the story of our cocoa farmers by Africa processing most of our cocoa beans locally for the African and the world market, which is already happening. So let us know your thoughts and suggestions on this inside the comment section below. Again, if you did not enjoy this particular video, please don't worry because we have more videos on this channel about every developmental project and initiative going on in Ghana. You can check them out. Thank you very much 
much for watching. My name is Sharif Haruna. Please subscribe, like, have a joyful life and see you in our next video. Makrao.